having refused all of their uh, plea bargain offerings, which were again, which which were offered under under a veil of uh, we'll stop illegally threatening you and terrorizing you if you sign here. There was a June 19th trial that came and ensued. It was, and this trial was exemplary of the threat and evils that are op that were operating and are operating covertly beneath the surface here. To begin with, the jury pool was illegally fixed and preordained, having CIA, FBI, NSA, which is National Security Agency, Minneapolis Police, military, prosecuting attorneys, and four members of Northwest Airlines, the very airline on which we were attacked, present on the jury pool itself. This was not a random jury pool. It was a tribunal designed to falsely convict the innocent. And I might inform people in the case they're not aware that jury pools must be randomly selected according to law. This one was tailor-made. The judge was uh, David S. Doty. Uh, and again, David S. Doty is the judge who threatened us, as I earlier alluded to. Uh, he is known in the legal arena for his tyranny. Charges of judicial misconduct against him can be seen at http colon slash forward slash forward slash www.clr.org forward slash fed hyphen judges dot html or you can go to clr.org website and look under federal judges. You'll find his name at the, at the bottom of the page, the bottom portion of the page, uh, maybe on the last half, on the, on the, on the, uh, the bottom half. Judge Doty would uh, threaten to have the U.S. Marshals get us on several occasions during the course of the trial, to the, again, to the effect that I now sleep with my door barricaded, as I mentioned before. At the trial, we were threatening to silence, and we both felt very much sabotaged. Both my mother and I were threatened in silence and, the, and we were threatened with consequence if we testified and therefore we were left voiceless at our own trial, unable to speak on our own behalf. Our only access to advocacy was in the hands of our defense attorney, Robert Jones of Carlson and Jones. Uh, before coming down the trial, uh, we'd been told we could testify. When we arrived at the trial, we were told that if we testified, there would be severe consequences for us. So again, more threats, more illegal threats. Uh, we were severely misrepresented by this attorney at our trial. And so our only mouthpiece would misrepresent and underrepresent us. And the truth would never, effect effectively, the truth never came out. This lawyer would effectively sabotage and misrepresent or refuse to give all argument that led to the proof of our innocence and failed to subpoena police or passenger witnesses as well as having refused to countercharge police. Uh, this resulted again in the complete occlusion of truth and the cover up of evidence of their lies and deceptions, uh, again, by keeping witnesses and guilty parties from appearing at trial where the truth would otherwise have been exposed in cross examination. And now, uh, evidence. Um, despite the fact of all of this uh, uh, illegal activity was revealed at the trial uh, because the evidence is so overwhelming. Despite their tactics, irrefutable evidence pointing to their guilt and our innocence came out. Officers, officers were caught in blaring self-contradiction on the most basic of points on several occasions giving evidence in support of their falsified positions, their falsified reports, and the fact that Officer Hort was not standing in front of me as he had been falsely purported and therefore I did not commit this act. One officer had been caught confused and purported himself to be in two places at once. Remember, they were falsifying their positions. Well, he gave not only his falsified position, but his real position in the same context and revealed their game and their, and their deception thusly. Uh, this same officer would succumb later to a Freudian slip and refer to me as the victim on stand. We found that very interesting. The prosecution didn't. The prosecution was enraged. Moreover, the head stewardess, in direct refute of the stewardess that had originally accosted my mother and I, and who had claimed that we would raise, had raised our voice and whatnot, would affirm that at no time did I raise my voice, that I remained calm and composed at all times. This was just moments after the junior stewardess, Sherry Caudell, had stated, had stated defiantly on stand in segregated testimony, we are trained to kill before we are killed. Again, coming from an airline stewardess, this is very disturbing. That's appalling, actually. 
it only goes to show the level of paranoia and the level and the level of vehemence that that that, that has been displayed here. Beverly Banks actually when she came and spoke with us after we complained about Sherry Cadell's behavior came and spoke with us very quietly squatting down on her heels next to our row so that she could speak with us in hushed tones so that our conversation would be private. And again there's no way that we would have been having this conversation in, like, in, in hushed tones if we had been yelling of course. She would never have squatted down next to us and spoken quietly to us if either of us had been yelling. No matter, she testified on stand that we were not raising our voice, had not, had not, had not become uh, uh, angry or hostile at any time. Regardless. Exactly. In other words, the falsified, the, the, the complaint of our RA, RA passenger was also false, just as, just as the attack was unwarranted in evidence of racial hate crime. That's right. Uh, despite having been effectively given a gag order, the strength of the evidence of our innocence and the depth of their lies is so strong, again, that it came out even without our testimony, and despite their fervent attempts to hide this evidence, as illustrated earlier on. Yet this was to no avail. This did not help us. With a tribunal jury pool laced with elements of FBI, CIA, military, NSA, Northwest Airlines employees, Minneapolis police, prosecuting attorneys, as well as a tyrannical judge with charges against him for judicial misconduct, who repeatedly threatened us during the course of the trial, who was there to listen to the truth? No one. This was not a trial, but effectively a hanging. And again, uh, I should mention that if anyone questions the nature of this jury pool, the jury pool members were required to give evidence of their backgrounds at the time of the jury selection while on stand. And so this is, this is undisputed evidence, as well as it uh, also occurring in any court documents that were, that were distributed thereafter. Uh, so again, there was no attempt whatsoever at, at any framework for the preservation of justice. It was simply a venue for the propagation of the violations, prejudice and persecution against us we'd already suffered in the, in the thin disguise of a trial. The entire network of judges as criminals is exposed at uh, the following website, uh, clr.org forward slash crimjudg.html. Currently the threats continue. Following the trial, all the ominous occurrences have continued steadfastly with no relenting. Mail sabotage, phone tapping, silent listener phone calls, no one at the other end of the line. And now with the recurrent company, uh, accompaniment of threats, threatening phone calls from the U.S. courthouse and threatening of uh, threatening consequence should we not return for this sentencing which has already actually transpi uh, uh, transpired this uh, sentencing date November 21st. We were absent from this because of course we have very severe concerns for our safety uh, with, with all these threats having already been made my life having been left in a pool of blood and again on the impetus of that judge's threats upon our person. Uh, again my mother and I have been terrorized uh, not sleeping, not eating properly for the last nine months, and always under the constant presence of, of, uh, of threat. Uh, and but what's more, their lives must be exposed so that we can finally break free from their Gestapo threats and their constant persecution. We see it as the only end to our suffering in sight. Uh, so with that end in mind, again, uh, we now recognize that the court system that has subjected us to this tyranny is no more than an extension of the corruption, the evil, and the intimidation that uh, we had already been subject to. Uh, an extension of racial hatred and bigotry that is sweeping this nation in the United States uh, more and more as we speak and threatens to put many other people in the same position that we are if active measures are not taken in a, in a timely fashion. Again, to contact us, my name is Aaron James, 204-4740654, and Linda James at 204-889-9134. What's more, we, again, anyone listening who feels they're in a position to assist, uh, we would be very appreciative of any assistance that we could be uh, given at this time. We'd very much appreciate any con contact uh, in the form of suggestions or encouragement, assistance, whatever you feel you can provide in the way of encouragement or help would be very, very much appreciated. Uh, so again, uh, this information can also be viewed at AaronJamesStory.com as I illustrated before. This kind of tyranny is a sign of the times. People must step up to defend against it or this, this kind of 
uh, illegal intimidation and Gestapo uh, threat continue, will continue. Thank you very much. Thank you.